Good morning, friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to thank you guys for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, this literally, literally does not work. So let's get open for business here, and let's wake up the football gods. Wake up here. Wake up here, God. Wake up. There we go. Wake up. It is Taco Tuesday, everybody, and I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you're all safe. I hope that things are getting better for you guys as well. It's been, <laughs> 2020 has been a rough, rough, rough year. Rough, 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 rough. Okay. <clears throat> it's been a rough year for everybody, and hopefully it'll start getting better here and maybe finish off with the bag. You know, maybe it's the darkest before the dawn, and maybe things will change for the better. So, here we are, September 1st. Hard to believe August is gone. Training camp is just about gone. Next Thursday, the season starts. Next Sunday, our Cowboys take on the Rams in L.A. It's hard to believe. Whew. Man. So, Zeke Elliott has been talking quite a bit about, you know, um, how much talent he sees on this team versus other years, thinks that this is the most talented team that he's been on. But he also had another great quote. His answers on this is actually really interesting. I want to read this to you guys. Um, he was asked about the biggest difference between the offense under Mike McCarthy. I mean, it's a lot of the same stuff. I would say we married up our pass looks and our run looks a lot more so we're less predictable. I think that's probably the most change. So it won't really be that much change. I think we're going to emphasize a lot more of not just having looks that it looks like a run or if it looks like a pass, but having that look that we can throw the ball or run out of it. That's key. That brings up play action. Play action. See, play action is you're faking the run to do a pass or a run pass option. That was one of those things that this is where I, it just mystified me. If something works, you want to do more of it until they figure out a way to stop it. Play action, say, Six years ago, the Cowboys did about 20% of the time play action, which was one of the higher amounts, percentages. Other teams realize how much play action helps the team and started doing it more and more. We still consistently, we're still around that same number. Other teams started using it more and more. The Rams, in fact, used it for perfection when Todd Gurley was in great health. It would be, you know, as, as good as people would think, that Jared Goff was that year they went to the Super Bowl, a lot of his big pass plays were actually passes out in the flat to Todd Gurley that Gurley would take to the house. When you, and I've said this so many times, oh my God, I've said it so many times. When you have an eye formation or you have Zeke back in there and teams are figuring you're going to run Zeke up the middle, and you got Dak under center. Dak fakes the handoff and bootlegs out. More times than not, everything's clogged up in the middle. And when Dak gets outside, you are literally putting the cornerback on an island. Does the cornerback come up and get the quarterback? Or does he stick with the receiver? It's a no-win situation. If he comes to get the quarterback, you just dump it up, soft, cat, soft pass, right over to the receiver. It'll be wide open. If he sticks with him, then you can take it and run. And you can, it, it, there's almost no bigger statistic for the Cowboys season last year that you looked at the difference between using play, play action versus not. The only game that we lost where we did play action 28% of the time was the Minnesota Vikings game. And in that game, Dak had 397 yards, three TDs, and we should have won the game. But 
you know, the coach decided to take the ball out of Dak's hand that last drive. You had a kicker who missed the field goal. You ended up having a turnover that gave the ball, you know, deep in your territory. If you want to know night and day difference, we beat the Eagles 37 to 10 in play action over 30% of the time. We lose 17 to 9 and we use play action less than 10% of the time. Being predictable in the NFL will get you killed, flat out. That's why Mike McCarthy is going out there and basically saying, you're not seeing our numbers. You're not seeing who's playing well. You're not seeing the whole field. We do not want to give an advantage to anybody else, and that's a good thing. So the difference being, and the reality Basically knowing the plays, or having some familiarity with it, with this transition of not having as much off-season as you would normally have is good. The fact that they're just going to disguise it, it's even better. In the end, there's only so many different plays that you can run, but if you're simplistic versus it being confusing, when you use more motion and different sets to do the same plays, people just don't know. It's more confusion, more doubt. And when you listen to... Most of the talking heads out there, most of them will tell you the Cowboys offense is predictable. It's not very complex. You know what's coming. You know how to stop it. Even on our defense, that was one of the complaints that we had, that everybody knew what we were running. So it'll be interesting to see, since we have basically most of the same players, what the difference will be with the offense and defense without being so predictable. I don't know about you, but I am looking so forward to this season. I, I literally can't wait. I can't believe that it's a week and a half away. Um, shout out to uh, Michael Anthony Fitness and E2 Blue for helping me out with the set last night and E2 uh, joining the live streams. Um, it's It's fun. It's actually fun. Um, to have somebody else in here to kind of bounce ideas off of and things. I still have some more work getting everything set up for it and uh, getting all the bugs out of the system. But we are truly building um, the Joe Boo Sports Report studio down here where uh, we'll have multiple sets and multiple things that we'll be able to do. And we'll be having you guys in here as well. Um, I had one other point I wanted to bring up, and I can't remember what it was. You know, it sucks when you get old and start getting forgetful. Um, hmm. It'll come to me. I've got to get down the road because I've got to go down and take care of a hot water heater and a window. And uh, I've got a lady who's got to look at this place to see if she decides she wants it or not. So we'll be on the road today. So we'll try and keep you informed as much as possible. But it takes time to upload and stuff. It looks like it's going to be a rainy day. But I'm thankful truly thankful that I was able to get up this morning, have work to go to, and have each and every one of you guys. So be safe out there, and uh, any news on the Dallas Cowboys, uh, we'll definitely bring it to you. Oh, one other thing they're doing. <clears throat> Sunday night, Sunday, the Cowboys are having a documentary about bullying, about being bullied and then being an NFL player. And that'll be an interesting take. I can't wait to actually see that. Um, and so on. I'm Mark Holmes, and, well, I'm about to get my sidekick, and we're about to head down the road. I'll see you soon.